Hello again everyone. Today I'll be doing a Matchbox restoration. Here I have a Matchbox number 67 Volkswagen 1600 TL. It's in need of a little bit of help. It suffers from two broken pillars and a lot of paint chipping along with some oxidation. I think I picked this up for less than a dollar due to it being broken. On a positive note, it does still have all four of its rubber tires and each is still well attached to the rim. Now unlike past restorations where I modify the car, I plan to return this one to its original like new state. The first thing I'll need to do is drill out the rivets and tap the posts. I use a 2-56 tap to do this. This car has opening doors I'll need to take care not to mess up. If you remove the spring in these doors it's very difficult to put it back in correctly. I can still open the doors to paint them. To remove the paint I use aircraft paint remover. Aircraft is the brand name, and the paint stripper is made by Clean Strip. Despite the name, you buy it at auto parts stores to be used on vehicles. It sprays on with a foam consistency that keeps the solution in place. It works well, but it's one of the few items where wearing latex gloves gives no protection. The solution goes right through and starts burning your hands within seconds, so keep that in mind if you try it. So here's what the body looked like after the paint was removed. I'm always amazed at how shiny these old vintage Matchbox cars are under their paint. It's not like Lesney was going to apply Spectraflame to these cars and needed a shiny metal surface to reflect a light through the paint. It really is a testament to the quality and effort they put into these die-cast models. Here you can see I'm using some triple aught steel wool to remove oxidation and any leftover paint. This also scratches up the surface for the primer I'll be applying later. In past videos I've received some criticism due to removing the mold lines in a car. These were small lines that were created at the junction of two molds. While the end result looks better if you remove them, I will leave them in for this video to appease the purist and because I do want to return this car to its original state. So at this point the car body is ready for primer. I have removed most of the oxidation and all of the paint. I've also removed the paint from the inside of the doors and around the hinges. Now all I need to do is apply the primer. The nice thing about primer is that it shows any areas that need more attention. You can now see how bad the front pillars are, for example. So now I need to address them. There are a lot of different glues you can use to repair this problem. I chose super glue because it's fast, easy to clean up, and you can buy it in different viscosities. Here I'm using a very thick super glue. You can also buy accelerator sprays that will make the super glue cure almost immediately and these are very useful. The downside is that I find that the accelerators seem to weaken the glue, so I won't be using any accelerators here. Instead, I will place the car in a small clamp and let the glue set up overnight. Once the glue is set up, I simply sand away any excess and then repaint the car in primer. With the primer dry, I can go over the body and look for any areas that need added attention. This is a very important step as any mistakes that get past you here will usually show up in the final paint job. I like what I see as far as the primer goes, so I'll move on to painting the car. I'll be using a red acrylic color that matches the original paint quite well. I'm assuming that the original paint on the car has faded over the years, so I'm going a slight bit darker. I'm of course using an airbrush. I use this as it gives me total control over the paint application and applies paint much thinner than a spray can. I have airbrushes that cost many hundreds of dollars, but you will never see me using them as there is rarely an opportunity that requires them. This one you see here is around $25, and I've been using it for five years without any issues. You really do not need an expensive airbrush for this hobby. The cheap one works fine, and the best part is I'm willing to always take risks in what I run through this airbrush, something I would never dream of doing with a very expensive airbrush. I have no clue what PSI I'm using as I never look and always go by feel. Too much pressure and you make star pattern runs, uh, too little and you'll be there forever. I do use acrylic thinners to help with the flow, usually three drops is all I need. You can make the airbrush its own hobby if you like, getting into waxing the needle and things like paint retarder. These things are good to know, but not always needed in this particular hobby. The only other advice I would give is to be sure that you get a compressor that has a small tank. The tank keeps the air compressor from having to run all the time and also removes the pulses you tend to get from a tankless compressor. So while the three coats I applied dry, I'll turn my attention to the base. 
This is my favorite kind of bass, where they use the bass as the headlights. It saves me, and obviously it saved Lesney, the hassle of having to paint them. To clean the base, I will dip it into my electro polishing bath for a few seconds to remove all the oxidation. For the headlights and bumpers, I'll go a little bit further and polish them using a small polishing wheel on a Dremel. Most metal polishes work here, so you don't have to use what I'm using. While I have the polishing wheel out, I'll go ahead and polish the wheels and the hubs. I'm taking care not to polish too hard on the rubber tires, however, a little polishing there won't hurt anything. If you like, you can always polish the base. I usually skip this as a shiny base looks out of place, but some people really do like that. Once everything is polished, I will clean the car with soap and water to remove any polishing residue. So here's what the paint looked like after it was dry. I can now apply my first coat of two coats of Tester's Gloss Clear Coat. The Gloss Clear Coat will need to cure overnight. Here's what it looked like the next day. Not as shiny as I had hoped, so I'll take the Dremel with a polishing wheel and some polishing compound to the paint and work for a glossy finish. This car has a lot of raised details, so polishing it is much more difficult than other cars I've done in the past. In fact, I messed up this first paint job and had to repaint the whole car. Nothing more irritating than having to start over because you messed up on the last step. So here's the car body after I repainted and repolished it. For those who ask, yes, I make mistakes and I make a lot of them. All right, all that's left to do is to clean up the windshield. To do this, I'll first wash it with soap and water and then polish it with a polishing compound and polishing wheel. These old plastic windshields are thinner than modern ones and tend to have a lot more defects in them from their manufacturer, so don't be surprised if you can't get every imperfection out. Well, with all that done, we are at my favorite part of the restoration, putting everything back together and seeing what it looks like. For those that ask, I use small button screws to hold the car together. I do not glue them or do anything that would be permanent as I always want the ability to take them apart and rework them. Like any art form, you get better as you go along and sometimes it's fun to revisit old projects and rework them using your skills that you have today compared to what you had then. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I plan to try to keep a better schedule of video releases. As such, you will probably see more of these restoration or quick tip videos. They are easier for me to make and there is no shortage of cars in my collection that need to be restored. I will of course mix in full customs and lots of Mad Max cars. Anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.